Hello everybody and welcome to The War Room. This one is for the heavyweight clash between Derek Lewis, of course, one of our all-time favourites. Lots of fun to watch. Against Jailton Almeida. Although, Jamie, I will admit, I, I always read his name Jailtown now after, after the podcast we did. Jailton Almeida, scary dude. Scary dude. A little bit predictable. I'm going to cover that in a moment. But um, this is, I mean, this is a fun fight to, to watch. It doesn't really matter whose side you're on you just know this one's going to deliver because it's going to be it's going to be wild one way or the other we kind of know what to expect from both guys um i'll get into it in a second okay quick tale of the tape so ufc stats has this as 19 and 2 for jelton almeida and 27 11 and 1 no contest for Derek lewis uh longer average fight time for Derek lewis um I mean, you know, he's he's been fighting at the top longer. He's had a lot of uh, he's had a lot of longer fights against higher level opposition, um, which I guess kind of. I mean, look at this no, notes on the back of an envelope today. I'm I'm all over the place. Um, one thing to bear in mind with Derek Lewis is that yes, yeah, some you know his his fight time is is longer by you know three and a bit minutes, three and three minutes and twenty five seconds. However, um, in you know he can knock people out in the last minute of the fight and that's something that that you always have to remember when you when you're fighting Derek Lewis sometimes he looks hurt sometimes he looks injured sometimes he looks like he's about ready to quit and then you step forward with confidence with 10% reduction in your focus and your concentration and you wake up realizing that he's just knocked you out cold um there are set, definitely certain areas where he can catch Jelton Almeida um, and partly down to his predictability, which I'm I'm going to talk about. Um, height and reach is both the same. Six foot three for both fighters, both 79 inch reach. One thing it is worth noting, though, which I think is quite interesting, is that up to 2016, Jelton Almeida was a welterweight. So, and you can check this on his Wikipedia, 2012, 2016, welterweight, 2016, uh, sorry, 2017 to 2018, he was a, well, uh, a middleweight, and then he went up to light heavyweight 2019 before then, obviously. You know, I mean, he, of course, he's kind of drifting a bit between the two weight classes. I, I would imagine that if he needed to, he would be a, a light heavyweight, but the, the size of him is comparable. The speed that which, at which he moves at, his strength seems to be... Um, perfectly adequate for this weight class I mean I do feel like you know you look at John Jones you look at Cyril Gann the heavyweights of the future are going to look more like Jelton Almeida aren't they I mean they might not be coming up from from welterweight a few years ago they might be fully grown proper heavyweights but um he he is a very dynamic very explosive individual that doesn't have any wasted weight on him so you know you you take I mean Derek Lewis is going to be weighing in up close to the top of the limit as I would imagine he always does even though he is coming in better shape I will say that um but he is a, I mean, Derek Lewis was probably never a welterweight. He was probably born light heavyweight. You know what I mean? He's, he's just a, he's a big individual. Doesn't mean to say that he doesn't have the speed and athleticism to match Jelton Almeida. We know this from his high kicks and his flying knees, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, as well as his ability to stand up with legitimate black belts hanging onto him. Um, so that's something else that Almeida is going to have to potentially deal with or factor into his game plan. Um Okay, back to tail of the tape quickly. So strike lander per minute again. Like a lot of these are skewed because of the the difference in experience and the difference in their UFC experience. Um, Jelton Almeida three point eight strikes per minute, two point six for Derek Lewis. But again, he only needs one, <laughs> one in one minute of one round. It doesn't matter. Uh, striking accuracy slightly higher for Jelton Almeida, partly due to the fact that he's he's holding a lot of his fighters, his opponents down and hitting them, which me- makes it easier to hit. Um, striking defense better for Derek Lewis, even in spite of the fact that he's fought some of the best guys around. Um, takedown average at six point four for Jelton Almeida. Um, Good takedown accuracy, 68% as well. Decent takedown defense. Derek Lewis, 52% takedown defense. Of course, the sub-average goes in the direction of Jelton Almeida. And, and I mean, Derek Lewis has got one one submission on his record. It, it's an armbar of all things. I mean, you would think it was some kind of guillotine choke when someone was trying to take him down. But um, I don't really expect a submission out of Derek Lewis. I certainly don't expect him to start thinking about it in this fight because it, it would probably be unwise. Um, okay, so let's let's quick talk about the matchup. So, what do we know about Jelton Almeida? Well, first of all, he's going to front kick you in the face with his left foot, and then he's going to level change, power double into the fence, right? And and even if he doesn't do it front kick to level change, you might do it front kick, level change. You might go front kick, level change, 
it's always the same pattern. And, and you know, it works for him. It, it seems, I don't know whether it's some kind of, I don't know whether it's it's like, a, I don't know, it's a signature move or whether it's some kind of safety net, security blanket that he feels like this is the right way to start a fight. My, my concern with it is that, of course, it does get predictable, right? Now, in times when we've seen him do exactly what he wants to with his opponents, he's he's grabbed a hold of them, he's dragged them to the floor, up against the fence almost always, following that front kick to the face, front kick to, to power double, nice low shot, wraps their legs together, puts them on the floor, and then progresses himself to a position where either they're turning their back to get up and give the rear naked choke, or he puts himself in a mount position where he beats them up until they give their back and rear naked choke. It's a very clear and concise path from one stage to the next. I, I think it was even Felder on commentary said how many times have you done this DC like it, it's a clear cycle that's really good in, in mixed martial arts generally but it works very well at heavyweight now the reason why this is going to be a, a favorable situation for Jelton Almeida if he's factored it in and it's also worth noting that he looks up to Daniel Cormier is that this is what Daniel Cormier would do I, I, I referred to it on Inside the Octagon years ago as the grind cycle right Daniel Cormier embracing the grind that was his whole thing this cycle that he puts people in where he takes them down against the fence and weighs on them leans on them why they get back up forcing them to carry that weight and then he takes them back down again and he, he repeats this cycle or recycles it until he's able to expose a, a, a neck attack or a submission to get the fight finished <clears throat> Derek Lewis is a very strong individual. For him to be able to have Gabriel Gonzaga or Roy Nelson on his back and just to kind of stand up and shake him off like a wet coat, he's most likely going to be able to do it to Jelton Almeida, but he's not going to be able to keep doing it. He's not going to be able to keep doing it over and over again for round after round. So there is going to be a point where that finite style of escaping is going to start to work against him. He will get tired. And Jelton Almeida will keep trying to take him down and will keep working to top position to, to work uh, uh, to, a, to a neck attack. So that's something that we've got to see Derek Lewis adapt. If he is taken down, he's got to be a little bit more patient and maybe a little bit more energy efficient when, he, when he's getting up. As, especially because, you know, when, when he's getting up, he, he looks like a toddler. Like he turns over to his knees and puts his ass in the air first. And like it's an easy position to break somebody back down from, especially if they're starting to get tired and they're not moving as quickly as they as they uh, normally do. So if Jelton Almeida is going to win this fight, he's going to come out, he's going to front kick Derek Lewis in the face, and he's going to level change, take him down, pincer his um, uh, his knees together, and then work to that that top position where he can encourage a um, a, a, um, a back exposure. One thing that I think would be useful for him to do based on what we've seen of Derek Lewis previously, is the front kick that he throws to the face. I, I, I've been thinking about it a little bit, and I don't know whether it's because it throws his opponent's head back and leaves their legs and their hips where they are. It might be because it, it's a more favorable way of, of making the, the legs available for him. But something that might work really well against Derek Lewis is the front kick to the midsection, because we've seen him struggle with straight body shots before. He's been hurt, and he shows you he's hurt as well. Like If Jelton Almeida wants to take him down, it would be much easier to level change on him after he's turning away, holding his stomach, than he would be if he's you know just avoided a head kick and might be thinking about a flying knee. Because this is where we go into the, the benefits for Derek Lewis on the predictability of Jelton Almeida. So he's going to throw a front kick. Shamil Abdurahimov knew this and he shelved the kick and he punched him with a right hand and it hurt him. If that was Derek Lewis landing that shot, we may not have seen any more of that fight. It may have just been over in that moment. His his read on knowing when the kick was going to come and being ready to do something about it with a counter in mind, that's basics for Derek Lewis. He 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 is an expert at putting these power fists on people's chins. And, and however he needs to get there, he's going to wade through and crack because he knows he only needs one shot to land. And whatever happens in the process, this is why he can get drawn into exchanges like he did against um, Pavlovich. Because he knows he only needs one shot. And in his mind, and it's the same with power punchers, they, they, they often get to a stage where they're like, well, as long as I land. So they always think the next punch is going to be the end of the fight. And they kind of get caught up in these moments where they, they, they're vulnerable. Okay, something. So, so the predictability of the front kick, he he almost paid for it against um, against uh, Abdurakhimov. He was almost knocked down with that right hand. It was a good shot. 
the other thing was the uh, the flying knee from um Nas Nasser Nasarov Nasarov is that right is that how I say it the guy he fought on on the contender series the first fight he had in the UFC so it was a second round rear naked choke and uh Nasuddin Nasarov so and he was coming in with a sambo background big strong guy you know fully expecting and you can see this you can kind of see the shock on his face at the end of the first round when Almeida gets up and walks back to his corner and he kind of stays on his knees like no one's been able to do that to me before that's kind of that was kind of the the body language that I was getting from it and and you know same thing in the second round he was taken down his back was exposed and and he was choked out but but he was a he was a problematic individual in the first round because of his ability to defend and to slow Almeida down and in the second round because he was able to get himself into the second round based on his abilities in the first he almost landed a flying knee because he knew that Almeida was going to level change so there are the predictability of the front kick the predictability of the level change are two areas where Derek Lewis can capitalize and you go back to Derek Lewis's last fight with the skip knee, the flying knee. He's a very, very athletic individual. In moments where if Jails now made a shoots once and fails or shoots and takes Derek Lewis down and Lewis gets up and shakes him off and keeps walking him down, panic might set in. And panic shots are usually about a metre further away than, than an actual proper takedown. You, set, you tend to see people level changing out of panic into really bad circumstances. The one I always use as an example, and I could probably update it, is uh, BJ Penn against Sean Shirk. And, and maybe it sticks in my mind because that was the first time I remember seeing it. Like I remember watching BJ Penn kind of walking back into the fence and Sean Shirk level changing, knowing full well that he was going to be under pressure with the, you know, with hand speed and he went straight into a knee. Um, the, these are two areas that if I'm Derek Lewis, I'm thinking, okay, I'm waiting for the front kick and I'm waiting for the level change. And I've got two weapons that I'm going to use against him based on those things that I'm expecting from his game. <clears throat> The work for Derek Lewis in this one is if he does get taken down, getting up safely. If he does get taken down, not leaving himself exposed on the floor to take big shots or to expose his back. And also a little bit of a poker face wouldn't go amiss sometimes. He is he is so easy to read for a lot of opponents. And what and the reason why I think this is even more important in this fight is because I also feel like Jelton Almeida is on a little bit of an emotional roller coaster sometimes when he's fighting. Like I think I think sometimes he comes in with a little anxiety or a lot of confidence and he tries his first game plan front kick to level change and if it works great and his confidence soars but if he struggles a little bit then it starts to dwindle and it can drop quite quickly and and like he did when he got hit against Abdurakhimov you see that little moment in his eyes where all of a sudden he looks and feels like a like a welterweight against the heavyweight and he's like oh, panic panic that's not a good situation to be in for Derek Lewis. And I think both of these guys are going to be able to read one another quite well. So if, say, for example, Derek Lewis has stuffed a couple of takedowns and he's doing pretty well, and then Jels now made a throws a front kick to the midsection and Derek Lewis can't hold his face and, and has to show that he's uncomfortable, that's where Almeida's confidence is going to skyrocket and then Lewis is going to have to really deal with this problem. Like, of course, you don't want to show your opponent that you're hurt, but you especially don't want to show an opponent that's got such a... Uh, such a tendency to, to um, what's the best way of putting it? It's just this kind of soaring enthusiasm. The, the wide-eyed, they're like, oh my goodness, I'm going to get a finish. And then they go charging after it. And then you're dealing with someone that is a big athletic individual that's now got all of this confidence that the end is in sight and they just kind of go crazy. And in those scenarios, even if you're not even really hurt to begin with, it's so difficult to recover under that kind of pressure with a, with a guy as big as Almeida with the confidence that he would have if he sees Derek Lewis as hurt. Um See, I feel like if Derek Lewis knows that he's hurt um, Jelton and he can see it, he's not going to rush in quite as much. He will do if he lands a big shot. Like if he cracks you with a big shot and he sees your legs go, that's his opportunity to charge in and go. And again, something that might be worth pulling back a little bit because that's when he's going to run onto takedowns and give uh, give easy things for Almeida. Um, I'm looking forward to this one. I'm, I think I say that on, on every one of the war rooms, but I do. I generally look forward to these fights because I'm because I'm I'm unsure how it's going to play out. I have a good idea of what to expect from both fighters. I feel like I know their capabilities based on what I've seen so far in their game, but I'm always open to being surprised. I'm always open to seeing 
what else they've added to their game. Maybe Derek Lewis has got some some sick butterfly sweeps this time around, and I'm going to be incredibly surprised. But as far as I see it, Derek Lewis has got to, got to stay on his feet in this one. He's got to stay off the fence and not get trapped on the floor, taking shots and potentially exposing his back. If he can slow this fight down and pick his shots, maybe capitalize on the predictable front kick or the level change with his right hand or his flying knee, then there's a there's a, an easy finish there for Derek Lewis if he can land it. But for Almeida, you know, stay away from the power and, and respect the power all the way through this fight, no matter how tired or hurt Derek Lewis might be because uh, he has an he has an unusual power in his hands and he only needs one shot to finish. Um, yeah, it's going to be a great fight, this one. Did I do a tail of the tape, Jamie? I did, didn't I? Awesome. Enjoy these fights and I'll see you next time.